What is going on guys? Welcome to your seventh MySQL tutorial and in this lesson we're going to be learning more about MySQL. Pretty cool, huh? So the first thing I want to tell you guys is say you were in this scenario. You're sitting there working at your desk and the boss comes in and says, Bucky, I need you to give me a list of all of the states our customers are from. So we say, okay, just give me an hour, no problem. Select state from customers. So we go ahead and run this query an hour later after taking an extended break. We call our boss back and say, hey, there you go, check it out. So he's reading through this list and he's like, all right, looks pretty good. New York, North Carolina, yada, yada, yada. Okay, what the heck is this? New York again, North Carolina? Bucky, what are you doing? You giving me a wrong list that has like all these duplicate and non-distinct results. What did you just like copy this twice? And we're saying no. Our customers are actually, you know, maybe we have two from New York, maybe we have three from North Carolina, and he's like, dude, uh-uh, because evidently he calls me dude. He's like, no, I only want a unique list. I don't want duplicate results. So we say, oh, you idiot, you should have told me that. Boy, don't say that out loud. So in order to get a list of unique or distinct results, in other words, we only want each row to display once, even though we may have additional customers for example four or five customers from New York if this is the case we only want to return it once so in order to do that we use the keyword distinct right before the column names now whenever we go ahead and run this query check it out we say okay call him back he checks our work again New York North Carolina okay make sure they didn't repeat and they did it excellent so that's what you have to remember whenever you want distinct or unique results even though you may have a duplicate result in your data, use the keyword distinct and it's only going to return that row one time for each value. So now our boss is looking at all of this and he's saying, okay, how come every time you run a query it returns, you know, like a hundred results? And we say, well, because that's how many rows we have in our database. But what if he's saying, okay, is there a way that we could limit the number of results? Because I don't want to be looking at 100 results every time I answer you a question. And we say, well, boss, indeed there is. So in order to do that, just, just go ahead and run a select statement. So say we wanted to retrieve the ID and the name from customers. Let me just go ahead and copy this and run it. Now, whenever we were to do this, it would return however many customers were in our table. So I think our table has like 100 customers in it. So we would go and we show this to our boss and he's like, dude, I don't want that many. I only want the first five. So in order to limit your results, use a keyword called limit. That's the beautiful thing about MySQL. It just makes sense in everyday terms. You don't have to like translate it or anything. Whenever you want to limit your results, use the keyword limit. Makes sense? So we go ahead and show him this and he's like, Ah, oh, not bad. So based on the first column you select, it takes that criteria and basically we're saying, okay, limit the first five people based on their ID number. So as you can see, that is why we got the first five people, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, excuse me. So now we're saying, okay, that's nice and all, but what if I don't want to start at the very beginning? What if instead of, you know, getting the first 10 or 20 customers, I wanted to retrieve 10 customers, but only, I don't know, maybe I wanted to start with number six or something. Well, in order to do that, we need to use an additional variation of limit. So of course we know that whenever we use limit with one number, it automatically starts at the very beginning. However, there's also a variation where we can use it with two numbers. So let me run this query and talk to you guys a little bit about this. Instead of limit 5, I use limit 5, comma 10 and hit go. And now I can see that it retrieved 10 pieces of data starting with number 5. And if you're saying, okay, this actually starts at number 6, so what the heck is going on? Well, first, let me talk to you a little bit about how limit with two numbers works. You can use two number limit to specify a range. Now whenever you're doing this, the first number is your starting point and the second number is how many rows or how many pieces of information do you want to retrieve. Now remember, why does this start at 6 even though I put 5 here? The answer to that is because unlike people where we start counting at 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
computers start counting at zero, zero, one, two, three, four, and that is why our first result is six instead of five. So one last time, remember this. Limit with one value, whenever you hit something like limit five, that always starts at the beginning. However, if you wanna do a range, then you need two values. The first value is your starting point, and the second value is how many pieces of information or how many rows you wanna retrieve. So basically, you can use this variation to start anywhere, anywhere that you want it to. So there you go, there you have it. Hopefully you guys understand Limit now because we're gonna be using it a lot in the future. And again, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and ask me on my forum, tnbforum.com. So again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.